All right, I'm an idiot. Hi, I'm Matt, and this is Procrastination Garage. If you enjoy the content, I hope you hit the like button, and I hope you subscribe. See you at the end. Thanks. It's a damp and rainy Friday morning, about 7.15. It's the start of the Labor Day weekend. Can you guess where I'm headed? I'll give you a clue. I'm headed to pick up my daughter right now. She's going with me. Good morning. Where are we going, Ryan? Packwood. Yay. <laughs> Back in Packwood for the biggest flea market in the United States. Okay, not really. It's still a fun one, though. What do you got there, Ryan? Marion Bay Pie. Done in Packwood and headed home. Did we have a good time, Ryan Lee? Yes, we did. Woohoo! I spent way too much money on Hot Wheels. Maxed out the credit cards. Dropped my daughter off and headed home. You guys want to see what I got in Packwood? Well, I hope you like die-cast cars and trucks, because that's what I got. It's Saturday morning, and here's my haul from the Packwood Flea Market my daughter and I went to yesterday. Uh, we had a good time over there. I didn't buy a ton of stuff. I did seem to spend a lot of money, though. Uh, bought some Hot Wheels, uh, some green light stuff, uh, race team stuff. Uh, yeah, here it all is. I bought a few loose matchboxes, some older ones. Uh, this one's in pretty good shape. I think it's missing some ladders. This one here is in really good shape. This one's in good shape, except it's missing the roof. But I have another one of these. I think the paint's all chipped on that has a good roof on it. So I'll probably swap that at some point. And this one here I'll probably repaint, but it was kind of a nice piece. Um, here's some new old stock of matchboxes that I picked up. Uh, 20 bucks for four of them. I thought that was a pretty good deal. A couple of loose matchboxes were kind of cool. I love the Tucker Snowcat being a snowmobiler and all. And uh, then I got this old Hot Wheels supercharger, and uh, it does work. Um, not sure how well it works and whether Hot Wheels will go through it or not. It needs a good cleaning. And then I was kind of psyched about this. It's an Austin Healey. It's a Barbie. Uh, it's an alarm clock. And the only thing wrong with it, it's missing a trim piece here. And the big thing about the trim piece is it has a radio uh, dial information on it, but not the end of the world. Um, at first I thought this was fairly old, but as it turns out, this was like a repop in 1996. But that's all right. I'm a big Austin Healey fan. Now the controls, some of the controls are there. And then you tune it with the little spinners on the wheels for both those. So I thought that was pretty neat. Then we come back to town, and my wife tells me about a local yard sale that supposedly has a lot of die cast at it. So uh, my daughter and I swung by there, and uh, this was kind of the highlight that I picked up. He had a lot of stuff, but uh, I'd spent most of my money in Packwood. didn't have a lot left. But this uh, Future Liner, um, this truck actually showed up at a car show, or well, actually a truck show here in Yakima Valley a few years ago. And I remember seeing it in person, and I always thought it was kind of a neat piece. So I grabbed the die cast. And then just a couple other Hot Wheels. But what was really funny is that the guy recognized me from TikTok. I don't, I didn't know him. Um, I guess we bought stuff from him at the local car show, uh, Hot Wheels and stuff. But I didn't know that. But anyway, he said, he said, "Are you on TikTok?" And I said, "Yeah." And he goes, "You're, you're Matthew, aren't you?" Said, yeah. As a matter of fact, so I'm, I'm famous. Finally, somebody recognized me from TikTok. And if you're interested, I have about uh, 2,000 followers on TikTok. So if you want to follow diecast stuff, uh, it's MD Mead, MD Mead over on TikTok. Anyway, so that was our haul from there. So now let's get back to regular Procrastination Garage content, whatever that may be.
What a pigsty down here in front of the garage, right? Yeah, I know. We'll get that cleaned up. But first, the garage itself. I mean, look at it. It's pretty bad. Yeah, look at it. Don't even look at that bench there. We're not even worried about that. What we are worried about is all this stuff right here. Um, this is pretty much all yard sale stuff. And a lot of it's from my mom, from her estate. And the goal was to do a yard sale this summer. We haven't gotten to it. We're not going to get to it. So this stuff needs to go down in a storage container and get all this stuff cleaned out of here because I want to use this for storage. The original plan when I built the shop was this was going to be my area for mechanical stuff, uh, working on vehicles, storing stuff like ATVs and boats and stuff like that. And that the uh, garage over here would kind of be a woodworking shop. Um, what it's turned into is just a storage dump and I don't really do anything in it. I just basically walk through it. Uh, what I, and what I wanna do is get all the yard sale stuff out of it. And then I wanna make this storage for things like uh, my log splitter and chipper and, and things that get used occasionally that I don't want left out in the weather, but I'm tired of them taking up space in the shop. Or something like the sprayer there that never even seems to end up in a nice location. Uh, I'm also now, I'm running two 54 inch mowers, so it'd be nice to be able to move them out of the way in the winter time. So anyway, the goal is get all this stuff down in the container, except for things like the table saw. I've got a drill press over there. That kind of stuff will actually uh, go into the shop. So where to begin? It's overwhelming. I guess it's rather appropriate that mom's old minivan is the one that's uh, loaded up, ready to haul stuff down to the uh, container. This is load number one. All right, it looks better, but I've still got a long way to go. Um, I pretty much cleared out all the stuff that's uh, mom's for yard sale bound. Unfortunately, I came across a lot of stuff. Uh, she was a porcelain artist. I mean, she painted on China. So I've got a bunch of paints. So I've set those aside there and over there. I need to find a place for them because I don't want those to freeze. Uh, I found some stuff that uh, doesn't belong down the container. And then I found some personal effects of my mom's that I need to go through. So they're sitting over here. So it's, I've still got a lot of stuff here, but I, two full car loads. So, I mean, that is a positive. So let's get this stuff down the container. And, and that's probably all we're gonna do tonight. Uh, it's Saturday evening around five o'clock. So I think we're gonna wrap up. Container's pretty full, huh? I bet you envy me setting up for a yard sale next, uh, next, I don't know, April, May, sometime around then. Yikes.
It's Monday afternoon after 5 p.m. And I've been pretty busy today. Uh, I've been working since, oh, I don't know, around noontime, maybe a little before noon. So what have we accomplished? Well, uh, I started by moving the refrigerator. Well, they're both freezers, a small freezer and a bigger freezer. Uh, they were down in this end, and I moved them down to this end. The white one there is not plugged in, so it's not being used. I just I hate to get rid of it, so I've been holding on to it. That's the one I use there as the little one. And my issue is, because it's over there in the corner, I always, I, I would come in through the door here, and I would just have to kind of work my way out and around to it. This way being right there, I'll just make sure I keep a path open right to the door, so that'll be a lot more helpful. Um, that was mom's stuff that I either need to go through or the paints and stuff. Um, I moved uh, my little workbench I had in here. I've had that, I built that workbench about 25 years ago. Just can't seem to get rid of it, so that's what I just moved over uh, near where the UTV's parked. I've got plans for that. Uh, I've got a radial arm saw, which I've never used. That was my dad's, and before that, my grandfather's. I hate to get rid of it, so I moved it over the other side. Uh, I had a little small drill press and a bandsaw sitting on a little tabletop in here. Moved those over. Uh, I had a little uh, miter saw that used to just sit around on the floor. I moved it over the other side. Uh, the lathe, I forgot to move the lathe over. I should have done that with the tractor. I'll maybe take care of that tomorrow. And then just everything else is all cleaned out. So, uh, I've still got my big pile of wood scraps here. I don't know what to do with this. I'm just going to leave it right where it's at for now. The workbench over there is still a disaster area. It's mainly a bunch of unorganized nuts and bolts and miscellaneous parts that just need to be sorted and, and dealt with. What it is is uh, I've just kind of inherited stuff from my dad and from a friend of my mom's. And, you know, you hate to get rid of anything. But on the other hand, you know, then you just got a whole load of junk. Those two boxes there are full of some tools and stuff I inherited that I haven't really dealt with yet. Anyway, so tomorrow's project is to bring the... Uh, the log splitter, the chipper, uh, sprayer, and who knows what else, and bring those over and get those parked here. So we're done for today. It's Tuesday afternoon, so now we're picking up where we left off uh, yesterday. So after moving this over here, the next step is, what I want to do is I want to situate it right there next to this little tabletop here. So I just need, need to move this junk out of the way, and then we'll just slide this into place. Um, what this does for me is a couple things. You know, this is kind of my metal working area in quotation marks. Um, you know, I've got the metal chop saw there. Uh, now I'll have my grinder and another vise. You know, I was forever having to run over the garage to use the grinder, so I was going to move the grinder over here anyway, and I was going to bolt it to the end of this. But I don't really need this workbench over in the other in the garage, and I don't really want to get rid of it because I it's just got a, I've got a soft spot for it because I've had it forever. Um, so I thought we'll just put it here and, and I typically have stuff stacked in this area anyway, so I'm not really going to miss the space and it'll help me get things cleaned up. So anyway, enough talking, let's get it done. All right. That's where I wanted it right there. I've got room to come through here. Uh, I did end up moving this down about six inches, uh, which tightens it up between the drill press, but not much. Six inches is fine. So I think that's a good place for it. And plus it gives me advice and a grinder out here where I use them. Um, something you guys haven't seen that I've been working on. I, see, I'm doing this for you guys. Is uh, I'm trying to get my shop in order. I had a makeshift table back behind where this toolbox was sitting. I moved it out of the way. I ended up moving it over here. I have, you can't really tell and you probably don't know what they are, but these are little bookcases. They fold together. And uh, I have a bunch of them from my mom's. And I'm keeping them. I've got a use for them eventually. And we use them during the yard sale. So they're just kind of in the way taking up room. So I, I made the best of it. I made it so I could set my little table on here. So now my tire changing gear is up there out of the way. And that cleaned all this area up down here. So I could put the uh, put the motorcycle and the stand it's on. I could slide it out of the way. Which opens this area up much wider. At least it will when I get everything cleaned up. So, And here's the workbench. You can see I do have some stuff on there that shouldn't be on there. But it's just five minutes to clean it off. And, and I will get it cleaned off. So that's where we're at. We're getting more organized out here. And all this organization is thanks to you guys, really. I know you're not here actually helping me, but just by doing these videos, um, thinking somebody's looking over my shoulder and watching, even though there's only five of you that watch it, that still that shows I'm making some progress here at the home front. And remember, that's the number one goal for Craft Station Garage, is to keep me motivated. Anyway, so let's move on.
The wood chipper has been living back in here behind where the motorhome parks. And it's not really a good place for it because when the motorhome's in here, then I don't have any room to walk around it. And plus, I have to be real careful back the motorhome in so I don't hit it. So it's time to move it to its new home. But in good conscience, I can't do that without tearing into the carburetor. Uh, the last few times I've used this, uh, as soon as I shut it off, uh, it's the gas keeps flowing. It must be getting past the float. So I don't know if there's going to be something obvious or not, but uh, let's tear into the carburetor real quick and see if we can find a problem. All right, that part was easy. Well, maybe we'll just drop the float. Well, it moves freely. All right, that wasn't very well planned out. If you don't have a set of these, get them. I got them off of Amazon. Lots of different size plugs. You just got to find the one that's the right size. There, no more leak. I've moved it over here to the workbench so it's a more favorable height to me. And uh, what I'm noticing is is that uh, this is the needle right here. And when the float goes up, that's supposed to allow the needle to seat. But, you know, it doesn't have a very good spring on. I'm not sure it's fully seating. Oh, pin just fell out. Anyway, we're going to take it apart and check it. I don't see anything wrong in there as far as it being dirty or anything. I mean, this thing's nearly brand new. Hi, right, Bear. I'm just not seeing a problem here, I guess. I thought maybe the spring was weak or something, but it doesn't appear to be. Well, I'll spray it down with some carb cleaner to make sure there's nothing up in there, but I don't think there is. I mean, the little rubber part there looks brand new because, heck, it is. What I could do is I could uh, pull this apart, and the little spring that's in there, I could go ahead and stretch it out a little bit. So maybe I'll take care of that. When I took this apart, I'm not sure how well you guys can see it. It's probably not focusing. The little spring there, it has a weird... Thing in it. It's not it's not a perfect spring. There's a piece that's kind of going wonky. And I don't think that happened when I took it apart. But I'm going to go ahead and fix that too before I put it back together. Time to put it back together.
Oh, I should have put this on before. All right, I'm an idiot. The gasket won't stay up there by itself. Try again. Lost my nuts. Air cleaner looks nice, still. Well, I can't say if it's fixed or not, but we didn't find anything really wrong. I did stretch the spring so that it'll uh, the needle will seat a little bit better. Uh, everything looked clean in there, so I don't know. Um, the thing does have a fuel shutoff. That's what this lever right here is. And uh, so I just have to be religious about shutting off. But, you know, usually if you just shut off for a few minutes, you don't need to worry about it. But that thing was leaking so much fuel down into the carburetor that it was getting into the cylinder and was kind of locking it up. I had to pull it over real carefully until it cleared out. So, I don't know. Let's go ahead and see if the thing will fire up. And then we'll put it in its new home.
log splitter is in. The reason I had it running is because I was running all the fuel out of the float bowl. Uh, I do expect to be using it soon, but uh, just in case I don't, I wanted to make sure it was drained. So i got to say that the log splitter takes up a lot of room in here. But that's all right. Uh, the rest of the stuff won't be as big. Uh, let's get some other stuff in here. I guess since we're moving the chipper, we ought to see if it runs too, right? All right. So I was just getting the lawnmower fired up so I could go move the tank sprayer up and clean it out before we put it in the uh, the newly cleaned garage. And uh, the cable is stuck worse than it's ever been. I don't think my heat shield did any good. In fact, it may have made it worse. I don't know. So anyway, I'm totally stuck now. The question is, what's it going to take to get it unstuck? That thing is stuck bad. It's not budging. And you know what I think is going on? I think this, uh, this metal piece here is covered in this plastic from here on around. And I think what happens is this gets so hot that some of that plastic melts down through the metal because it's just a, basically a spring. I mean, it's just wound really tight. I think it melts down through there because it should be metal on metal. I mean, it's a metal rod and that's a metal like spring or, you know, tube. And they should slide. It shouldn't really be a problem. So what's locking it up? Now, if I grab the casing like right here, I can rotate the casing on the on the metal but right in through here it seems like it's shrunk down and constricted it and again i'm thinking maybe it's melted through so i think this is where it's stuck so when i buy another one of these pieces this whole throttle assembly i'm going to cut the plastic back to around here because i don't think it's really necessary to have it anyway uh, and then it won't be able to melt through i mean i assume that's what's happening because, I, again, I don't see how metal on metal would be a problem. The only thing I can figure is that this plastic is getting down through there, and then it just seizes it up. So for now, we've got to get this apart, and I've got to break it loose through there, and I'm having a tough time doing that. So I guess I'm going to take the throttle cable assembly all the way back out to do it. I hate doing that, but I don't see any other way. Well, I don't see any easy way. I think we found the problem. I peeled back from here. It came up to about here, right in this area. And as I peeled it back, look at that spot right through there. That's where the problem is. It's melted down in there and somehow I've got to break that free from the rod in the center. And if I can't do that, then I'll just buy another one. But I, I, think, I, I think I'll figure it out. I'll let you know. I got it broke free and it's all put back together and hopefully it's gonna work. 
So here's what I've done. I've got it uh, stripped clear back to here, and the bad spot was right there. So right now it is moving. Um, the problem is there is plastic in here, so it's going to want to keep, it's going to want to do it again. But I'm hoping that over time that plastic will kind of push itself out, you know, spread out a little bit, and maybe it won't be a problem. I don't know. I'm going to have to replace the cable. But at least now we know what to do. If we get a new cable right away, we're going to strip it back to there. Another thing I did, uh, I left my heat shield in place, and uh, I had a kink in this uh, outer skin here from the old way because it, it added width and, and pushed the cable assembly out, so there was a kink right in here. I added a couple washers back in behind there to relieve that stress point, and then everything's tightened back up. It's set up to where the choke works. Um, I don't know. Let's see if she'll start. I assume it will. Uh, cable's up. We assume she'll start. Am I not engaging the choke fully? I don't know. Yeah, okay. I think that's what's going on. I'm going to need to readjust it again. All right, attempt number two. Yeah, she's cold. I think everything's okay. It just needs to warm up at this point, and I don't have time to do that right now. I've got to shut things down, shut my irrigation water off, and then I've got to get ready to go, do you believe this, to my first snowmobile club meeting of the season. So uh, we're done for today. Nothing comes easy. I went ahead, I drained the tank sprayer, and I thought, well, let's run some fresh water through it to make sure it's still working here at the end of the season. Because I rinsed it out with fresh water after I used it last time, I'm pretty sure. So anyway, I hooked, the hooked it into a bucket of fresh water, and uh, I flipped my switch up here, and nothing happens. Well, then I came and looked at the switch, and it looked like that. There was no power. Or at least the light wasn't on. So I moved it back and forth a few times, and so I got the light to work. But the question is, why isn't the pump working? Well, I suspect it's a bad switch. That's what I'm hoping. So I've got my meter out. We're going to check power right here, because that's where it comes off the battery after it's been through the switch. So if we've got power there, then it means we've got a problem somewhere between there and the pump. Um, let's hope that the problem's up there somewhere. The switch is on and lit up, so in theory, we should have power here. Um, I think, even though that one's red, that ought to be the ground, although I don't know. Eh, it did something. Yeah, I got nothing there. Alright, well I guess we can check this easy enough. All right, so yeah, we've got red going to ground. Never mind why. All right, 
there's nothing there. So it could be this fuse right here, or this one. I'm not sure. I doubt it. I think it's probably in that switch. All right, I might have just popped a fuse now. Let's check. Can you see it? That one's popped. I've got a new fuse to put in, and then I'm gonna use this alligator clip to connect the two leads up underneath the hood there, just temporarily. New fuse is installed and the alligator clip has the two pieces together. So when I hook the uh, power back up, in theory, that pump ought to kick on. doing is building proper pressure. A little bit of pressure. It's coming up. Maybe it'll get there. All right, that sucks. We're going to end the season the same way we began the season, with a crappy pump. Uh, I, I was able to get it to build clear to about 60, but uh, every time I would use a sprayer, it would drop back down to 20, and then it wouldn't come back to 60 uh, for, I mean, it would take three, four minutes to come back up. So I don't know what's going on with this pump. I'm telling you, man, you cannot buy a pump that lasts at all. So just another crap pump. Now, again, the thing did end up sitting out pretty much all summer. The heat probably didn't help it any, but the last thing I'd run through it was water. Anyway, regardless, we're putting this away. I'm done messing around with it. So why was it now building pressure? When I flush it out, I use a different hose. I use this hose here adapted to the uh, hose that goes down in the tank, and that usually works just fine. When I disconnected it in frustration and just utter contempt, I found this. This got stopped, because what happens is this is the bigger tube and this is smaller. It sucked up here and got stopped right there, and I'm not really sure what it is. It's almost like really wet paper or something anyway that was blocking the flow as soon as I removed that and hook everything back up I was able to build up to 40 to 50 pounds and spray and every time I'd let go of the sprayer it would quickly recover so right now I think we have a working system so that's good knowing we're going into fall and winter and hopefully when spring rolls around it'll work again anyway let's get the thing parked and be done with it How's that look? Yeah, garage gets a lot tinier you start putting stuff in it. But hey, we're solving a problem. We're getting stuff out of the shop and out of my way, and I've still got enough room to move around in here for what I need to do. So that's it, we're done for this week. That's a wrap on this week's Procrastination Garage. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, so what do we do this week? Well, we spent a lot of time cleaning my shop and the garage out may not be exciting video content for you guys, but it sure is stuff I need to get done, so I'm happy to do it. Remember, the number one goal of Procrastination Garage is to keep me motivated, to keep me working in the shop or out in the garage or out in the yard or playing up in the mountain, something so I'm not sitting around watching YouTube and TikTok all the time. So down in the comments, why don't you tell me about the projects you're working on or tell me about the things you're procrastinating about. I enjoy that just as much. Uh, I hope you'll hit the subscribe button, and I hope you'll come back next week. Uh, remember, my name is Matt. This is Procrastination Garage, and we'll see you then.